Welcome back to WTDU. What we are going to be doing is telling you about the science behind lifting your vehicle. Why would I even want to lift my vehicle? It's probably because you really just want to run bigger tires on your vehicle. And in order to do that, typically you have to put some sort of lift on it. Well, of course you could do a body lift. Those are just, were cool in the eighties and not so much anymore. And we want to get that suspension up off the ground in order to give us more ground clearance as well. The majority of products that we have here in front of us are going to do just that. Lift it by pushing the suspension down or actually changing the pickup points in which your wheel is going to be attached to. Let's break down a lift and what a lift might consist of. There are a million different ways to lift your van. It may be a body lift, which really isn't the greatest way to do it because it's just extending your body off of your frame. And the big problem is, is a lot of vehicles today don't even have a frame as we go to more unibody construction to reduce weight and get better gas mileage. And maybe a pretty spacer isn't the best way to do it either. Now with some of our kits, we're going to offer a larger coil spring. That coil spring is going to have a higher spring rate. Well, heck, that's also going to make the vehicle stiffer. And in some cases it does, depending on where it's positioned and the actual spring rate of it. That's maybe a whole nother class talking about spring rates and how they are going to affect your vehicle. And when you get into doing your front suspension, much like a giant lift block that someone might sell you, yes, it's going to lift your vehicle. But is it the best way to lift your vehicle? Ultimately, that's up for you to decide. Most vehicles are going to come with a specific amount of wheel travel. That's going to be how far your wheel can move from full compression into full extension. Let's just say that your vehicle has seven inches of wheel travel and it's going to sit in the middle of that wheel travel. It's going to give you three and a half inches up and three and a half inches of down travel as you're driving down the road. Ultimately, that's going to determine how your vehicle is going to handle when you run over certain objects like a speed bump or you hit bigger objects like maybe a curb. Your vehicle suspension is going to drop out or extend all the way out to keep that tire on the ground. The more that your tire is able to stay on the ground, technically the softer it's going to get. Otherwise, you know when you hit those big drop-offs that your whole vehicle wants to shift. Well, really, we're trying to avoid that, keeping the tire patch constant on the ground the whole time. This is a coil spacer for a Chevy Express van. Now, this coil spacer is going to lift your van two inches. Now, like we said, we have to steal it from something. And what we're going to steal it from is that down travel. So if we have that three and a half inches of down travel and we're lifting our van two inches with a coil spacer, we're only going to have one and a half inches of down travel to keep that tire constantly on the ground without feeling that abrupt jerking feeling when you hit that bump and you feel like, oh my gosh, what was that? And that's just your suspension extending all the way out. They are definitely good. And the pro of this is that it's going to be the most inexpensive way to lift your vehicle. That's a big plus. I'm also gonna be able to run a larger tire if you're on a budget, this could be the best option for you. Now, when we start talking about some of the other spacer lifts, they do get a little bit more complicated. As you can see here, this is our two piece Ford Transit spacer lift. And the reason that we've gone with all spacer lift on the Ford Transit is we're not trying to increase spring rate by putting a bigger spring on there. We're also not running the Bilstein shocks because in my opinion, this is my 10 cents guys, is that I feel like the shock is too stiff and it lacks the rebound necessary to really control the ride. So let's talk about the second option that you may have when it comes to a Chevy Express is you could run a three inch lift spindle on there. Now the benefit of that lift spindle is it actually moves this hub face down three inches from the original OEM position. And what that's actually doing is lifting your vehicle three inches without robbing that down travel. It's like working together with your suspension. Another thing that it's also going to do is it's going to increase your track width by three quarters of an inch. You can see that spindles and coil spacers are going to come in all different forms or types. And it's going to be the same kind of characteristics across all of these vehicles. What you can do still though is you could add a two inch spacer to your three inch spindle 
and now you got five inches of suspension. Now what's the benefit of that is you're able to run an even larger tire. Let's take the Chevy Express kit for example. When you take the two inch spacer and the three inch spindle, you can run a 285 70 17. Now you can also add progressive leaf springs to the rear of it, giving you that really nice ride. There are definitely advantages of both and how they can work together. I hope that kind of clears up a little bit of a difference between a coil spacer lift and a spindle lift. See you guys in class next time. I'm Professor Jeremy.